Hello and welcome to KringleCon. Uh, thanks so much for coming to this talk, Web Apps A Trailhead, uh, because web apps are really that. They're the beginning of a journey, just like those first few steps out of your door. You never know where a web app will take you. My name is Chris Elgie. I work for CounterHack Challenges. I primarily build challenges, and also I like breaking things. Uh, I'm, I'm a pen tester. And I teach pen testing for SANS, and, and there'll be some, some pen tester style to how uh, we, we talk through web apps today. And specifically, uh, the, the three things we really want to hit are the HTTP communications that, that web apps use, like between browser and web server. We want to talk about uh, parameters being in the URL or the address bar and also in the post body. And then we'll, we'll also talk about server side and client side code. And web apps are all around us. If you've been on the internet for more than a day, you have definitely interacted with web applications. And when we think of a classic web app, we, we think of something like uh, here on the left here. We've got this, this online learning portal where you register for classes and, and it feeds you video content, you take quizzes, you, you chat with, uh, with subject matter experts. And, and absolutely, that is a web app. But even much, much simpler things, if you, if you log into your town's website to check, you know, property taxes or, or, the, or the merriment forecast for next week, uh, even though it's much simpler, that's still a web application. There are still processes and decisions being made in the web server that drive the content that you see in your web browser. Now, at the same time, along with these kind of classic browser-based web apps, we also have all the mobile apps that... that are, are almost just skins for for browsers, right? A lot of a lot of apps, and here's a screenshot on the right <clears throat> of of uh, my phone and some of the apps I have installed on, on my mobile device. A lot of these are just uh, trimmed down web browsers that browse a specific page with you know maybe fewer uh, you know options and, and and frills that we see in a web browser. Uh, and even the ones that are fancier, that are 3D multiplayer, uh, you know, lights and sound and vibration. A lot of those apps are really speaking HTTP in the background. So they, they look like, you know, this is a specialized program, but it's, it's really in the, in the back end acting like uh, a web app. And that background HTTP looks like this, right? Uh, it's it's a, a get request. When you, when you go to your web browser and you type in www.kringlecon.com, it's a get request. And then instead of all this, it'll just be get slash and then HTTP 1.1. Uh, by the way, these examples are in this version of HTTP. If you're curious about the more modern HTTP 2, uh, you can go actually go back to a talk Chris Davis and I did last year uh, on HTTP 2, and uh, that's still on the North Pole server, so feel free to review that. But uh, it's not as good for kind of analyzing what's going on because it's not plain text uh, like we see in 1.1. So, so here's a GET request. This is where my browser says, hey, I need this web, web page, and then the server responds with something like this, 200 OK. So not a 404, I couldn't find it, not a 501, something's broken, uh, but a 200, <clears throat> here's your web page. And then, you know, it gives a bunch of other stuff here, a bunch of you know, kind of security headers and, and the good old cookie. Hey, I want you to update your cookie with this value, and that's great. Uh, and then there's this HTML, and that's where, uh, where the page that we're going to view uh, gets passed back. And we'll look at that in just a second. But um, I want to draw your attention to this piece right here. Here we have in the in the URL as part of what you'd see in the address bar at the top of the browser, you see an option. So it's it's the the page we want to see, and then and then a, a slash and a question mark, and then course. Course is the name of a variable, and equals pack. Pack is the value that that the browser is is asking to get in that variable. So you might see this on like a like an online retailer where you'll see you know a long web address and a slash and a question mark and then like SKU equals in some number and then it's showing you that particular SKU, that particular item number. And that's that's just passing in the address bar uh, this particular parameter. Now if we if we want it to be a little less obvious to the user what's going on, we can use a post request. So it's again something the browser does, but instead of get it's just a different verb. It's post and it, it's posting to a page. And here, instead of anything after this, this trailing slash here, all the parameters are down here in the bottom. They're in the post body. So they can't be modified by the user just by clicking in the address bar and changing things. But it's still data that is coming from the client that, that we as, as uh, enthusiasts, as hackers, pen testers, whatever, uh, that we can manipulate and send to uh, the server for it to then give us back some HTML. Now, 
HTML, what does that look like? Uh, if you've never done this, I encourage you to go to a web page, any web page, right click and pick view page source and you'll see stuff like this. You'll see tags with angle brackets and and uh, this is setting a header, LFU course registration. And then you'll see you know tags like this, script, and this is where we see a bunch of JavaScript. This particular code uh, actually runs the, the LFU, um, the, the library, the, the bookstore code, and it helps our browser figure out when to show uh, how much, uh, when to update you know, the amount of money we've spent or we're going to spend to update the, you know, how much money we have left. <clears throat> and that's all great. That's all on the, all on the front. It's all in the browser. It's all in the client. It's stuff that we can see and manipulate. So if we want this, this web page to show us something a little different, uh, we can modify this code in our browser and see it a different way. Conversely, uh, let me grab a pen here. Uh, backend code. So code at the server, server side processed code looks, uh, might look like this. Uh, this is some web code written in Python. Um, a lot of web code is written in, you know, .NET or in Perl or PHP or whatever. Um, I like Python because it's, it's relatively easy to use and uh, especially if you want to uh, teach your kids to code. My, my son Josh loves uh, doing a little bit of Python now and again. And we can use it with um, with libraries like Flask and Django and Cherry Pi to actually make it run a web page. So, so this specific function here does a bit of HTML escaping. And that's just where, you know, when I as a pen tester am looking for something like SQL injection, I might use uh, the good old fashioned single quote character to, to try to insert um, some SQL statements or portions of a statement into uh, a web app. Um, maybe if I'm looking for HTML injection or some kind of cross-site scripting attack, I might use these angle brackets uh, to, to insert my own code into you know what's what's going to be uh, handled by um, my system and other systems. And this function here, <coughs> invisible to the user, uh, just takes these kind of dangerous characters and uh, sort of nerfs them into uh, just HTML escape characters. So rather than passing a raw uh, less than symbol, it's going to pass this ampersand LT semicolon, uh, which which won't execute as code in, in a browser. <clears throat> uh, there are lots of other functions that can happen on the back end, certainly pulling in video or, or enabling a chat with somebody else. Um, here's a function that does some some hashing. So maybe we've got some uh, some parameters we've passed to the client, and then the client's going to make some decisions and then pass them back. But we want to make sure they haven't changed certain things. So we might use uh, you know in this case a hash to to verify the integrity of the information they're passing back. So all kinds of stuff can happen on the front and back, um, but. Uh, we need to make sure that anything that Im important that happens in terms of processing is done on the server side because the client has much, much less control over how things are processed on the server side. So uh, let's look at a, a concrete example here. Um, this is the ELFU uh, course registration page. Uh, I got here, I'm ready for the semester to start, and I see I'm already registered for toy making, choir practice, and merriment theory. That's great. Those are, those are all standards around here at ELFU. Um, but then I get to pick an elective. So maybe I want to get an advanced painting, toy sounds. I need to brush up on my sleigh packing theory. Uh, but I'd really like to get into elf dentistry. It's uh, Hermie got me turned on to that. I think it's a really burgeoning field, um, negative unemployment rate. <clears throat> and uh, But I can't because it's, it's full. Uh, when the code was passed from the server to my browser, it was uh, my browser was told to disable this button because there are five, uh, zero available seats of the five, so I can't register. Well, that's a drag. So I pick something else. I pick advanced painting. And then as I go forward, I can see that my, my browser passed that parameter to the server in the URL. Up, and you, we, can, we can see it up here in the address bar where here's the new page I'm on. I'm on slash store. And this, this parameter course is being set to the value paint. Well, that's interesting. Uh, where, does, where does that even come from? And let's, let's look at the source code. So I'm going to right click, view page source. Or if you like keyboard shortcuts like I do, Control U or Command U, and we can actually see the source code of the page. And a lot of the, at the top there is just kind of formatting, CSS prettiness, colors, and, and fonts and stuff. Uh, but then down, down here we see most of what makes the page itself. So, um, so we see uh, looks this looks like our, our our table that had the headers, course size, and vacancies. I'm going to use Control Tab here to swap between course size, vacancies. Yep, and then. If we look at advanced painting, let's highlight that line. I can see uh, it's a button named course with a value paint. Well, that's what I saw in the URL, right? I saw question mark course equals 
paint. So what if I wanted to do dentistry instead? It looks like I would need to set course equal to teeth. So how about I try that? How about I pick any one of these toy sounds and it says course equals sound and I see at the bottom it was processed on the server side and came back welcome to toy sounds. Uh, but what if I change that to teeth? Bam, there we go. Welcome to dentistry, the course I wanted. So again, that was just, just messing with this parameter up here in the address bar. Uh, but not uh, there's never there's never just one way to do things. Here's another way to do the same thing in this instance. I could use this little element chooser and then I could pick any element here in the web page uh, like this disabled button. And I can see the code just like I did when I was looking at source, but but now it's kind of interactive. So I, I see the button and submit course equals teeth. And then I see this attribute disabled. Well, what happens if I just delete the disabled thing? Oh, it looks like the button is enabled now. So I can click it and there we go. I'll hit F12 again to hide that console. Uh, I've got course equals teeth and I've got welcome to dentistry. Awesome. So, so a couple different ways to get to where we wanted to get just by manipulating things on the client side, because apparently on the server side, they weren't checking to see if the class I chose was full. So great. Uh, so one more example here, uh, and this is where parameters are passed in the post body. So it's not as obvious as it being right up in the address bar. Uh, but if I pick something like uh, I need a reindeer brush, uh, I want a couple pairs of extra elf shoes, I want to buy some snacks, because who doesn't love snacks? This guy loves snacks, some sugar pills, and maybe some, I got what, 30 money left. So I can't do, can't do 35 wood screws. How about I do 30? All right, now it says I've got, I've got enough to, to go. Uh, interestingly, if I try to overspend, this buy button doesn't work. But if I pick a number that, that does work, I can click forward. Um, but what if I want to maybe get a whole bunch of extra elf shoes? Uh, and maybe I want to try to manipulate things here on the client side. Sometimes... Uh, it's as easy as just putting in negative values, right? Maybe I can just put in negative 2,000 snacks, and then and then that comes up comes up with, uh, you know, that's going to cost me negative 10,000, and then at at the end here, I'm going to start with 200 and actually have 2130 left over, um, and then all this information will get passed as a a post body parameter, so it won't show up in the in the address bar like like the course does, but it'll still get passed. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, the LFU servers do uh, do some, some server-side validation, and they do see that there's something wrong with what I've asked for, so, so that's failed. So that's good. Uh, and that is that is absolutely the way we want to protect ourselves with a lot of these things. We want to mistrust whatever the client uh, is sending us in these types of situations. Uh, so with that, uh, that brings me to the end of the, uh, of the presentation. Uh, are there any questions about web apps and kind of how they're used? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, thank you, I can has pie. Yes, there are hints in this talk. All right, thanks very much.